Dajahao, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Hugo Da Wang. You know, for seven months I've been working on a timeline of the COVID-19 outbreak in the United States. I wanted to release this thing many, many months ago, but it just felt wrong because I hadn't yet given the United States a chance to properly respond. But now it's already October of 2020, and there's no chance at all that they'll be able to turn this thing around. So I figured I should release this thing and we can go over this together and see how they got into this situation in the first place. So without further ado, let's take a look at the United States COVID-19 outbreak. If you haven't seen my previous timelines, I strongly suggest that you watch at least the H1N1 video. This goes over the United States response to the H1N1 outbreak and also has a prediction from me on what would happen if COVID-19 hits the United States. If you've seen that video, you're going to see a very strong correlation between that and this response. However, this response was quite different, in fact, than the H1N1 response. And we'll go over that at the very end. Now, a little bit about how this timeline works. It's color coded. Yellow are warnings. Red are things that seem to have made the situation worse or reports of those types of things. Green are things that probably made the situation better. Blue are just general items. Beige are items that are new knowledge. Purple are very large gatherings of people after the outbreak had already started. And brown are reporting issues. Now keep in mind that just because something is red and had a bad effect on the pandemic doesn't necessarily mean that I'm saying that that was a bad thing to do. I'll probably make this timeline available to my Patreon, Subscribestar, and PayPal subscribers. So if you're one of them and you want access to this timeline to check the sources or recommend some changes or add things, that type of stuff, please let me know. In the meantime, let's get started. Okay, so this is the timeline. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can take a look. On the top, I've left just a few things from China, just so we have some points of reference. This is not meant to be a comparison of the United States versus China, but I will just kind of mention a few things because that's where I live and that's the first really big affected country. This timeline starts when Trump took office in 2017. So again, yellow are warnings. Here we have the Obama Trump admin pandemic exercise. This is an exercise that they ran while changing from the Obama to the Trump administration. A pandemic could become as bad as the 1918 so-called Spanish flu or American flu. Trump takes office and immediately begins a 70% China CDC US staff dismissal. Now there are US government officials who work in China's CDC here in China. So what this is, is he began reducing the staff count. Trump was briefed about the pandemic playbook. Bill Gates on this day said, we are not prepared. Uh, he also urged pandemic prevention. Fauci warns of a new or re-emerging infection in this administration. Without a doubt, we are going to see some either new or re-emerging infection in the next year or two or three or four but if history holds true, it certainly will happen in this administration, so we need to be prepared for it. Trump tried to cut $277 million of pandemic preparedness funding to offset increased military funding. Here's a warning about the big one is coming, and when it comes, it will affect every human alive today. Here we have the Trump admin is ill-prepared for a global pandemic. And then here we have the director of national intelligence reports novel or re-emerging microbe easily transmissible between humans remains a major threat with the potential to kill millions. Business Insider, the next pandemic is coming. A flu pandemic is coming. Emphasizes ventilators and other preparation. Pandemic will come, quote, sooner than we expect. November 2017, Fauci says the biggest concern is an influenza pandemic. Trump administration may be woefully underprepared. A new pandemic is a matter of time. An influenza outbreak remains the scariest scenario in public health. Here, the CDC announces cuts of 80% of global disease outbreak prevention efforts 
including in China, due to lack of funding. And that's scheduled to begin around October of 2019. Here, Trump cuts $1.35 billion from Prevention and Public Health Fund. The director of national intelligence says the potential for a severe global health emergency that could lead to major economic and societal disruptions. Tom Bossert resigns. He previously had called for comprehensive strategy against pandemics. Apparently, he was not getting what he wanted. Bill Gates, again, U.S. is not prepared for pandemic. National Security Council, Director of Medical and Biodefense Preparedness, says the threat of pandemic flu is the number one health security concern and the U.S. is not prepared. Here, the global health security team is disbanded and there are no senior administration officials who are focused solely on global health security. Two members of Congress say the United States is vulnerable to pandemics. A senator urges Trump to prepare for the next pandemic threat. U.S. is not prepared for pandemic. An influenza pandemic represents a real threat that could only be managed with a rapid and effective response from both national governments and the international health community. The U.S. is not ready for the next pandemic. The U.S. should commit to pandemic preparedness by creating a position of authority within the White House that transcends administrations and elevates pandemics as existential threats to a national security priority. Here, the government had a 1.5 million masks per day project that they abandoned. We are not prepared. A global pandemic response simulation was run. Another global pandemic response simulation was run. And this one, the ILI, the influenza-like illness, was actually from China. Here, the WHO says the question is not if we will have another pandemic, but when. We must be vigilant and prepared. And this here is the earliest time that COVID-19 has been suspected, which is March of 2019. March 12th is when some water samples were taken in Spain, which were later found to have the virus that causes COVID-19 in them. Because this would throw off the entire timeline, it has a very heavy burden of proof, so it needs more confirmation, obviously. But just so you can tell in this timeline, potentially the outbreak had already started that early. We're due for a flu pandemic. Hoover Institution highlights challenges with pandemic preparedness. Harvard, be more scared of pandemic unpreparedness. We must prepare for the next pandemic. And here we actually have a positive change. Pandemic and All Hazards Preparedness and Advancing Innovation Act. But then the US field epidemiology training program in China is abandoned and ventilator maintenance contracts are also abandoned by the government. Another warning, the world is at acute risk for devastating regional or global disease epidemics or pandemics that not only cause loss of life, but upend economies and create social chaos. Risk of a global pandemic is growing and the world isn't ready. The next global pandemic could kill millions of us. Experts say we're really not prepared. Pandemic is coming, but nobody is interested in doing anything about it. The next pandemic will be arriving shortly. And then the Crimson Contagion results are released. And the results are 110 million Americans were expected to become ill, leading to 7.7 .7 million hospitalized and 586,000 dead. They also highlighted a need for increasing hospital beds and overcoming a shortage of ventilators. Presidential candidates are ignoring one of the world's biggest looming threats. And then Wuhan military game starts and we have event 201, yet another simulation. And another warning, deadly pandemic could sweep the world. Right here in late October of 2019, are the earliest reports of people at least claiming that they may have been sick with COVID. So we have France, Italy, and Spain, all having people that are claimed to have been sick at that time. Uh, Brazil here, apparently the US was warned multiple times about a contagion in China, though it's an unsourced claim, so it's hard to verify that. The pandemic simulation exercise spotlights massive preparedness gap. Around here is when the New Jersey mayor said they may have been affected. Other than the one-off discovery in Spain in March of 2019, and the claims of people to have been potentially infected in October, and several other potential cases in November, this December 1st case in China is the first more or less confirmed case. And then the previously suspected first case was here on the 8th. The first case that had anything to do with the market was here on the 10th. So we know it has nothing to do with the market. Forbes, we are woefully unprepared. And Forbes also says that the first potential US case was here December 22nd, 2019. The virus from Wuhan was uploaded the 24th of December. 
So this is the first time that people in the international community had access to the virus information. That's the 24th of December, 2019. The 26th of December, this is when Dr. Zhang noticed the situation with her patients and it began the whole process of getting things going in China. The first international warning of any kind other than the virus being uploaded from China was this ProMed notification which happened on the 30th of December 2019. The following day, the WHO was notified and the international community was aware that there was a disease outbreak happening in China. During this period of time, the top brass in America was spending less than 10 minutes per meeting on any testing issues. The CDC issues a level one Wuhan travel notice on the 6th of January, level one being the weakest. The first known case in the United States is January 7th, which we didn't know about at the time. January 8th, the CDC issues a public alert and recommends masks, but only for medical workers in contact with Wuhan travelers who are also showing symptoms. So very, very, very strict requirements. And testing is only done on cases from China or on people who had direct connection to known cases. So absolutely the strictest kind of testing possible. And if we look at the China side, there was this long period in which the requirements to qualify as a valid case were too strict. And that kept the case numbers down, which created a false sense of security. So that's something that this is probably the biggest criticism I have against the, the China reaction. And this time period was 13 days long, just under two weeks, that the requirements for testing and qualifying as an active case were too strict. So now the United States is doing the same thing, only theirs lasts for about a month and a half. And from the very first case, studies later show that some states were hiding up to 90% of the cases that they found. On the 10th of January, the WHO says, healthcare workers should assume the potential for respiratory spread. They also say in their guidelines that specimens should be regarded as potentially infectious and medical workers should wear masks, goggles, and gowns. So the CDC and the WHO are, as of January 10th, both recommending that medical staff wear masks, okay? So they are both well aware of the concept of masks and what masks do. What they may not know at this point is that the virus is airborne. So it makes sense for them to recommend that medical staff wear these things, but not necessarily that the general public does. On January 14th, everything changes. The WHO says China coronavirus could spread, quote, it is possible that there is limited human to human transmission. As of January 14th, every single medical professional in the world is aware of the fact that it may be possible that there is at least limited human to human transmission. Reuters reported, new China coronavirus could spread, warns hospitals worldwide. They also said there is risk of a possible wider outbreak and they refuse to rule out human to human spread. And they also say, quote, limited human transmission between family members and that risk of wider human to human transmission should not be regarded as surprising. So as of the 14th of January, 2020, all medical professionals at least should be donning masks and debates should be firing off as to whether or not the public at large should be wearing masks. The next day, World Health Organization, quote, there may have been limited human to human transmission. And the Wuhan Health Commission says human to human transmission can't be ruled out and they expose a potential case within the family. Live Science reports new SARS-like virus in China may spread between people in limited cases. Two days later, three airports in the United States begin screening passengers but only those passengers from Wuhan. And the CDC declares they're developing their own tests. They don't need anything from the WHO. The CDC says, quote, there is some indication that limited person-to-person -person spread is happening. That's the 17th of January, 2020. The CDC begins doing press briefings, but they don't make any recommendations about wearing masks, avoiding crowds, changing your behaviors, anything like that. 
The next day, the 18th, the HHS secretary warns Trump about virus. Trump calls him an alarmist and interrupts the conversation to ask when vaping regulation will be lifted. On the 19th is what people at the time thought was the first case in the United States, even though there had been cases for at least several weeks, potentially even a month. 21st of January, the government turns down an offer for masks from a company called Prestige Ameritech. Fauci says it's, quote, not a major threat. This is not a major threat for the people in the United States, and this is not something that the citizens of the United States right now should be worried about. Fabulous. <laughs> no, I am glad to hear that. The CDC does upgrade the Wuhan travel notice to level two, and five airports are now checking passengers from Wuhan. The CDC, however, says the risk of this novel coronavirus to the American public at large remains low, and they don't make recommendations about wearing masks, avoiding crowds, changing your behaviors, or anything like that. And the WHO says that the global risk is high. Trump says it's totally under control. A New York Times article discourages masks. And even though at this point, everyone knows that there are cases in the United States and that it's human to human transmissible and that nobody is being encouraged to wear masks, still, we have a huge gathering at Sundance. 120,000 people attended this year's Sundance Film Festival, which began the last week of January. Days later, some of the people who attended developed flu-like symptoms. The renowned Sundance Film Festival is now being called a petri dish of coronavirus. CDC, the immediate risk to the American public continues to be low. Fauci says we don't want the American public to be worried about this because their risk is low. And again, they don't make recommendations about masks or crowds or behaviors. Meanwhile, an enormous NFL game. CDC, in the US, this virus is not spreading in the community, when in fact it had been spreading already for almost a month. White House Domestic Policy Council warns the virus is, quote, likely to dominate life in the United States for many months. But the CDC says, quote, the immediate health risk from the new virus to the general American public is low, and again, doesn't make recommendations about masks, crowds, etc. Former Trump admin writes an op-ed that says, act now to prevent an American pandemic. U.S. Army infectious disease expert says, quote, we should treat this as the next pandemic. New York Times article, we must do everything we can to contain and extinguish this outbreak before it becomes a devastating global pandemic. Trump is warned, quote, this will be the biggest national security threat you face in your presidency. Mercury Times reports, no need to wear surgical masks or the N95 respirators. January 29th, NPR, don't rush out and buy a mask. Forbes, surgical masks are, quote, too loose to really be effective in stopping the virus. The COVID task force is formed. WHO, whole world needs to be alert now. Americans defenseless in the case of a full-blown coronavirus outbreak on U.S. soil. However, the CDC says, quote, the immediate health risk from this new virus in the general American public is low, and they don't make recommendations about wearing masks or avoiding crowds or changing your behavior. January 30th, symptom-free transmission is possible. Reinfection is possible. Tests can fail several times. The Atlantic says we don't have enough masks. WHO declares a public health emergency of international concern. Human to human transmission in the USA is confirmed. 11 days after the first case that they knew of at the time, 23 days after the real first case that we know of now. So even though they already knew that this virus was human to human transmissible and that it was in the United States, it still took them 11 days to confirm it. And that's because I know this is really hard for people to get, but in that 11 days, there wasn't clear evidence of human to human transmission happening in the United States. They actually have to have clear evidence of human to human transmission to say that it is confirmed in the United States. That's called science. Sorry, 
I just get really annoyed when people pretend like the word clear has no meaning. So even though we now know it's a public health emergency of international concern, and that it is transmitting in the communities via human to human transmission in the United States, the CDC emphasizes that the CDC does not currently recommend the use of face masks for the general public. CDC does not currently recommend the use of face masks for the general public. The virus is not spreading in the general community. An example of what states were telling people locally, Illinois Department of Public Health says, quote, the virus is not spreading widely across the community. Again, this is not spreading widely in communities and the general public is believed to be at low risk. The virus is not spreading widely across the community. They also say, quote, we are not recommending people in the general public to take additional precautions such as canceling activities or avoiding going out. At this time, we are not recommending people in the general public to take additional precautions such as canceling activities or avoiding going out. Trump says we have it very well under control. Factcheck.org says masks not, quote, especially protective. AP says masks only advise for sick airline passengers and healthcare workers. And Snopes reprints that. A public health emergency is declared and quarantines are enabled for Americans who travel to certain areas in China. But it's reported that masks offer little protection against coronavirus and Americans still freely travel to and from China and other nations. Washington Times reports Trump never actually banned flights from China or Europe. Times says, quote, masks will not be that effective. And CDC, yet again, we do not currently recommend the use of face masks for the general American public. We do not currently recommend the use of face masks for the general American public. This virus is not spreading in your communities. I'm gonna stop here so the video doesn't go too long. I'm gonna break this up a little bit. If you want access to this timeline to check out the sources or contribute to it, please sign up on my Patreon, Subscribestar, or PayPal. And if you didn't get a link, please message me about it. Until next time, thanks everybody. See ya.